Hey everyone, I'm going to do a quick tutorial about connecting the dots and I'm going to be using a couple effects and a simple expression to animate a line and two dots moving together. So first thing I'm going to do is make a new composition right here, pushing that button and I want to do an actual the preset right here. I'm going to do 720 at 30 frames per second. As you can see, the width and the height right here is a 720 HD composition at four seconds long. That's that's just fine enough. Next thing I'm going to do is go up here, layer new, and do a new solid, or Command Y. Command Y is the shortcut for solids. And I'll bring that in and I'm going to go over here to the effects pane and search for beam. I'm going to drop it into the solid. As you can see, you have two points that you can move around. And there's a line that can go between them. Right now it's kind of cheesy. It's uh, kind of like a laser beam. And you can lengthen this to be 100% so you can connect the two dots together like that and I'm going to change these colors to white and make it just a nice white line and then I'm going to also change the softness right here to be zero so it's it's a hard line there's also these two right here the starting and ending thicknesses you can do you know you can have it be thicker or thinner on each end and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in three for each so it's a nice kind of fine line it could be even finer than that maybe too but that's good that's fine for right now after that I'm going to drop in two null objects so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna actually go and do command D to duplicate and make two null objects as you can see right here. I'm going to drag these to be near the ends of the beam because the cool thing about the beam effect is you have these two independently animatable points, the start point and the end point. So, you can do you can do this. So, we're going to use a simple expression to connect this point to this point of the null object. And then we're going to use the null objects to animate where the beam goes. You'll see how cool that is in a second. So what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to add an expression. So what I want to do is expand this arrow right here, expand the effects, expand beam, so I have these effect controls that are up here, so they have them down here, so I can connect things together with an expression. After that, I'm going to go to the null objects. I'm going to hit P for position to reveal their positions. And then right here, I'm going to highlight the starting point so it, it's highlighted. When I do that, I can go up here into animation and right here and do add expression. Now, expressions are, they're pretty, they can be pretty crazy. Like they're, you're opening the hood to After Effects basically because you can write JavaScript in this text box right here to almost do whatever you want. But don't worry about that. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is use this pick whip right here. And so I can select, I can, I can connect the starting point to something else. So what I'm going to do is, because it's a position parameter, I can take this starting point and select it. I can point the pick whip to the position parameter of the null object. And when I do that, as you can see right here, it writes a little snippet of code, which I don't understand, but that's fine. And what all you have to do is click away, and it engages the expression. As you can see right here, it's now it's a red variable as, a, as opposed to blue, and I can't move it. Because right now, it's connected exactly to the position variable of the null object. So right now, I can now I can use the null object to tell where the beam goes, where the starting point of that beam goes. So now I'm going to highlight the ending point, go back up to animation, add expression, 
go to the pick whip, and then highlight this position as well. See right here how it's still, it's got the cursor right here, so it's waiting for more input. All you have to do is just click away for the expression to engage. And so now I've got two null objects that can be animated. And they start point and end point are connected to the position points of the null objects. Now that's really cool because now I can parent other objects to this null object and I can put dots at the end of this line. So what I'm going to do now is make sure that nothing is selected in the timeline and go up to the ellipse tool and I'm going to shift command and drag to get a nice dot and then there's a thing you have to do with shape layers you can actually add more shapes into one layer that's why they have the contents and the ellipse I could actually add rectangles or stars right here if I wanted to but I'm just gonna add have the one ellipse what that, what that lets you do though is you can actually open this ellipse path and you have the stroke and the fill on the actual path itself and you also have these transform variables for the shape itself and this is also this is separate from the transform variables of the actual layer and I'll show you why that's important in a second now I have this these are my this is these are my values for the position of the actual ellipse in the layer as you can see right here this is the center point of the layer the anchor point and this is where the shape is so what I want to do is send this shape to be right in the exact middle of this shape layer. So what I do is I just zero out these coordinates. As you can see, it jumps to the exact middle. Now what I do is I parent the shape layer to one of these null objects like that. And now I can hit P for the position of the layer and I can zero these out as well and it jumps right to the center point of that null object. I'll just scale this down for a little bit and make it nicer. And so now, I'll just make a quick animation. So now I have a nice simple animation for this point and then I'm going to duplicate the shape layer by just hitting command D and I'm going to parent that to the other null object. And I'll go to shape layer, hit P for position and then zero that out. And now it's at the other end. And now I'll keyframe the second null object. Okay, so there we go. Now I've got a little animation. I can do whatever I want with these null objects. And now I have a beam. I have a line with two dots that connect it. And it's kind of got that technical style to it, you know. And the other cool part is because I've, I've added these uh, 
these null objects to be kind of the drivers for the, the start point and the end point, I can also parent other things to it. So say we have some text. Bring this down. I'll put that right here and I'll just parent this to that null object. So now that moves along with that whole thing as well. That gives a nice, you know, it's just kind of a cool way to highlight objects or, you know, have call outs for features or for text. And the cool thing about the beam effect too is that I can actually you know, you can have it, you can do all those animations too, where it starts at one point and it goes to this and it can actually extend out and all of that. So you can do some cool effects with the beam effect. Okay, so I've added a third null object and I've also duplicated the solid that has the beam effect on it. And right now it's got, it still has the same expressions written because I just duplicated this layer. Now what I can do is I can connect this third beam or the second beam effect to a third null object right here. So I'll change that starting point. Oops, sorry. So I'll change that starting point and connect it to this null three position. Click away, and there we go. And I can also duplicate this circle shape layer, parent that to the third null, hit P for position, and zero it out. And that way you can you can keep adding beam lines and circles to the different any kind of any amount of lines to connect the dots that you want in a scene just like it was in that uh, the motion periodic table for the link and that's how they did that so thanks for listening